Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, live stream mass at St. Lucie's Parish. Before we begin uh, with the introduction and uh, the celebration of the mass, I wish to thank you once more for your patience as we pray for those firefighters, those uh, people who's, who have been affected by the fires, those who have lost homes, those who are suffering greatly because of the air quality. We bring our prayers to them at this mass but it is that reason that uh, we were asked to uh, cease and halt all outdoor activities during this weekend, and so that is why we needed to cancel the masses on such short notice. Uh, we thank you for your graciousness in that. I spoke, got Father Andre and I were able to speak to many parishioners this morning and last night, uh, and graciously accepting the news, uh, even though our desire for the Eucharist is so great. So once more, as we invite our commentator to come forward to uh, let us begin our celebration. Thank you once more uh, for your prayers, uh, your graciousness, and we pray that first the fires may cease, and second that we may gather uh, to the joyous celebration of the Eucharist. Please continue to look for more information, both on our parish website, and we'll be sending out uh, email notices of when Mass will be able to be celebrated again outside. Once more, thank you and may God bless you and keep you safe. Good morning and welcome to our liturgy at St. Lucy Parish. This is the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please put aside all distractions and prepare yourself for the Holy Mass. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. With Once again, welcome, dear parishioners, in this streaming Sunday Mass. Welcome, dear disciples of Jesus Christ. The liturgy of this day brings us into the presence of the living God, whose mystery we want to welcome in Jesus Christ. Christ, his Son, our Lord and our Master. In the beginning of this uh, celebration, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory 
with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord.
came from the land of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, to apprehend or describe something, an event or a person we have just known, what we do in general is to use what we already know. We describe from our history and experience. Thus, a new event will be related to an event deemed similar in the past. We may hear, for example, that this year's heat wave is worse than it was three years ago, or that this COVID pandemic 
is reminiscent to the one in 1918. A new person is introduced to us, and then to describe him or her, we say to be sure to be understood, he or she looks like one. Likewise, when we discover a newborn baby, we often hear it's the portrait of his father. However, this first approach is incomplete, incomplete and partially false. This is what happens to Jesus this Sunday. By asking his disciples what the crowds think, it is a response of this kind that is made. The crowds, the people who follow Jesus from afar, perceive something of him, of his person, and of his mission. They describe him from their experience and the history of salvation. Thus, for them, Jesus is John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or even another prophet. The crowds do perceive something of Jesus. He may resemble one of the prophets, yet all these figures are figures of the past. They have accomplished their mission. They are dead. Yes, the crowds access something of Jesus, who is really a prophet, but they are mistaken about the essentials. Jesus may seem to them to be related because he poses signs that describe him in the line of prophets. But Jesus cannot be reduced to this figure. Then, speaking on behalf of the apostles, Simon went beyond the response given by the crowds. He does not rely on the figures of the past, for he has grasped the newness of Jesus. He frequents him, he knows him, and followed him. He is open to the grace that emanates from him. Thus he affirms, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, Simon describes him essentially without using a figure, an image. He says who Jesus is, even before Jesus affirms it of himself. So, by Simon, it is all the apostles who recognize this identity of Jesus because they follow him closely, listen to him, see the miracles he performs and how he prays. They know that he is and never will be a man of the past or a continuation of the Baptist who has just been put to death. That is why the question of Jesus to his disciples still touches each one of us today. But who do you say that I am? It is in the eyes that the Lord looks at you and asks, who am I to you? Am I still the Lord of your life, the direction of your heart? Am I still the reason of your hope, your indestructible trust? Not only does he ask us the question, but he demands an answer, brothers and sisters. And not just any, any answer. He requires a lived response, a response which is not found in books as a formula, but in the experience of who truly follows Jesus. 
Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. Of course, if we are content to be living room Christians, as Pope Francis says, instead of being apostles on the way, how will we be able to respond? If we believe only in the lukewarm way, in a lukewarm way, instead of burning with love, if we let ourselves just live as anyone, how can we give an authentic answer? A lived response is what Simon gave. And this response is going to be a central event on, in his life, to the point that from that day on, he changes his name. He too is entering a new era. And for the first time, Jesus gives an apostle and perhaps even a man to call he, himself Peter, the rock. He made him a new, a new man. He gave him a very special mission, which he received personally before sharing it with the other apostles. You are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Therefore, brothers and sisters in Christ, to answer the question that Jesus asks is to take the time to listen to him, to be close to him first. For let us note it, Jesus asked the question to those who know him intimately, those who have seen his goodness towards the sick, the sinners, the poor, etc. This is what made the venerable Pope Benedict XVI say 10 years ago that faith is not an intellectual adherence of a doctrine, but a personal relationship to Christ, the Messiah of God, the Messiah of the living God. So may the Lord then, may the Lord then enable each one of us to always draw our solid hope from him with the certainty that by following him, by carrying our cross, we will reach with him into the light of the resurrection. Amen. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God. Begotten, not made, comes from such shall with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord's love is eternal, so we have the confidence to bring our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters before God. 
the Lord's love is eternal, so we have the confidence to bring our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters before God. We pray to the Lord. Up here. For Pope Francis, successor to St. Peter, that the Holy Spirit will guide him in proclaiming the good news, promoting unity in the church, and inspiring us to greater love and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the example of the Apostle Peter, who professed his faith in the Messiah, commit us to live as people of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from disasters, unemployment, persecution, or sickness, that God will relieve their pain, protect them from harm, and give them strength of spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will deliver the human race from the coronavirus, heal those who are ill, and inspire those who are developing cures or vaccines, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may be healed and strengthened, and for all who have died, that God may give them the promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, for Firo Nguyen and Maria Wong, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Your kindness, O God, endures forever. Look with kindness on us here today and hear the prayers we make to you. Grant them according to your will, through Christ your Son and our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory of his name, our God, our Holy Church. O Lord, who gain for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnated by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you, O holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bounds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, where supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church, pray to God the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Oscar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, 
with Saint Rosa, with the blessed apostles, Saint Rosa de Lima, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days and families, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but not the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So if you are standing, please be seated for a few moments. Uh, thank you very much for joining us again. Just a couple really quick announcements and a blessing for our students and teachers and parents as they begin this new school year. First of all, as uh, many of you know, we have a food distribution, uh, Catholic Charities and Second Harvest Food Bank. Assist, we are assisting them in uh, helping the poorest of the poor uh, receive food uh, during this time when so many have lost jobs uh, or, uh, or are solely, solely in need. Uh, it happens every Friday here at St. Lucie Parish from about 9 a.m. till noon. And we are looking for volunteers. You know, I, we understand that many of our young people are going back to school, but perhaps you know a college student. Maybe it's a son or daughter, a grandson or granddaughter. Maybe you are a college student and you know others who do not have classes on Friday morning uh, and could come out and lend a hand in feeding uh, our community. Uh, once again, you can call our parish office. You can write an email. The contact information is in the bulletin. Uh, once again, we, we will get in contact with you after you contact us to see how best to serve. But uh, once again, it's a wonderful way to do something good for others and in serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And once again, reminder, if you have friends who would like to do this, they don't have to be Catholic. Right? This isn't a Catholic thing. This is a community thing. So we thank you once more. Uh, the prayer booklets are in the, in the birdhouses in the back for September, if you'd like one of those. Just remember, you touch it, you take it. Okay? Uh, faith formation classes are being planned. Uh, we don't know exactly what they will look like or when they will begin on the exact day, but we are planning to begin. So please, if you have some, one of your children need to begin faith formation, or if you are an adult and need to receive the sacrament of confirmation for Eucharist, or maybe you want to become a Catholic, please contact the parish office and we'll get you in touch with the right people. Um, also, uh, once again, thank you for your patience during this time of smokiness in the air. Uh, we will continue to update you on when we'll be holding mass outside again. Uh, it's one of these crazy situations. We can't hold it inside and we can't hold it outside. It's, uh, it's one of those crazy moments in history. I think the year is 2020. That's all I can say. Uh, we have our blessing for our students and for our teachers and for our parents. I'm going to ask Arturo to hand me the book. And so if you have a student, a parent, or a student or a teacher in, the, in your household, if you would just maybe lay your hands upon them, put your arms around them, blessing them. Lord our God, in your wisdom and love, you surround us with the mysteries of the universe. In times long past, you sent us your prophets to teach us your laws and to bear witness to your undying love. You sent us your Son to teach us by word and example that true wisdom comes from you alone. Send your Spirit upon these students and their teachers and fill them with your wisdom and blessing. Grant that during this academic year they may devote themselves to their studies and share what they have learned with others. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And thank you all very much for blessing your students. Uh, parents, you have a very special blessing. We'll get that to you next week. Uh, because I know that many of you are doing so much more than you ever thought you would have to do in educating your children. But uh, we do love you and honor you for that. And I'll turn it back over to Father Joseph for the final blessing. Oh, one last thing. Uh, Thank you for your continued support of our parish. If you wish to donate online, please do so. There's also a text to give uh, number that you can do, or we thank you for your continued mailing in of your, uh, your uh, envelopes or dropping them off at the parish office. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.